San Francisco, the beautiful city by the bay. It is also one of the most pet-friendly cities in the country, but it's also earned another canine distinction. I am told there are more dogs than children in the city. So that's why we're here in the San Francisco edition of How My Pet Lives. We're starting where we landed, San Francisco International Airport, where there's a motley crew that draws a big crowd wherever they go. The WAG Brigade. To say that it's really taken off, it really has taken off. It has taken off. It's quite a popular program here at the airport. It's been pretty successful. We're pretty happy with it. Needless to say, so are passengers. This tail wagon crew certified in therapy training through the San Francisco SBCA have been roaming the terminals for the past six years out of a need to provide emotional support for people flying in and out of the airport. But the program's origins came out of one of our nation's biggest tragedies. The first animal-assisted therapy program was at San Jose Mineta. The day after 9-11, their airport chaplain brought his therapy dog to work. And he was able to see quickly how his dog was able to relieve passengers' jitters. And from there, they launched a pilot program and it turned into a program. How many teams on any given month do you have or any given year? Well, we have 20 dog teams and one pig team. Most of the animals come to the airport once a week in a two-hour shift. Not any dog or pig can walk off the no, street. No, not any animal is meant for the airport environment. We need to make sure that our animals are good with loud noises, they're good in stressful situations, the animal as well as the human. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the team is a fit for whatever may happen in an airport. Any day can be different here in the airport. And you never know what type of passenger you're gonna encounter or why they're traveling. Not everybody's traveling for positive reasons. People who are maybe leaving on military orders, people who are leaving home for the first time. Um, then you also have travelers who are going on a really exciting vacation who might be delayed and super stressed out and they don't travel often and they don't understand what's going on. As cute as they are, they're at work. So even they don't get VIP treatment and must go through airport security. So no smuggling dog treats. They're strategically placed where they're needed most, like if there are flight delays or cancellations. They check the FIDs. That's the flight information display screens. They head straight to the FIDs and they check to see if there are any delayed flights. And they'll head down to those gate areas and check out who's there and what's going on. And they get to work. They spend about two hours in total here in the airport. That's a, a good amount of time for a dog to work a full yeah. shift. It's a lot. So let's address the elephant, or pig in the room. Lilu, the world's first, yes first, airport therapy pig. So the SPCA contacted us to say, hey, we've met a pig and she's a great therapy pig. What do you think about bringing a pig on board? And the reception excited. when she first started, and even, I mean, obviously now, it's pretty incredible. It's absolutely incredible. It's been nothing but positive. We're, we've had so much fun with it. What I love is that you have a pig. You have Tristan, who is not letting his wheels hold him back at all. And then you have the OG of the WAG yes. Brigade. So you have such a mix of animals, personalities, and they all just work together with this. They do. They've all become friends. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a really close-knit team and they all get along really well. So let's meet the humans behind Toby the Golden Doodle and the OG of the Brigade and Lee Lou, who bring so much joy to jittery passengers. What do people say to you when, you know, when they, when they see your dog or your pig and they're like, wow, you really made my day and you're making it so much easier for me to not think about having to fly? So I've had this thing where people will say, so what is he? And I'll be, he's a therapy dog. And they'll be petting him. And they'll say, well, what's the therapy? And I said, you're having it. It's the petting. And they'll be like, I'll say, how do you feel? I feel great. So it just makes people feel great to be around them. 
I've heard a lot of times people say this is exactly what we needed. We had a, such a long trip and we're just so exhausted. Or some people have to manage kids during lay, long layovers. Um, but I would say it's actually equally adults or kids or older residents. Um, everybody is just so happy to see the animals, especially their animal lovers. And Tatiana, with Lilu, I would not, and I think a lot of people would not equate a pig as being therapy. But that is not the case with Lulu. I mean, she definitely is. Correct. Um, so one thing is people don't understand how smart pigs are because they have intelligence of a three-year-old human child. So they are very easily trained and they're very smart, they're very emotional, they're very sensitive, as well as they're hypoallergenic. Um, also, she is very friendly and she has a very positive demeanor. Uh, so people get to pet her and they get to experience something very special and something new. And for many people, because they've never seen a pig in the real life, it really just brings that joy and excitement and the genuine emotion that it's just incredible. The whole brigade is incredible. Mission accomplished until the next flight. We all love taking pics of our pets. And years ago, when commercial photographer Peter Samuel started taking photos of his dog, he couldn't stop. It started with dogs after my last dog. Mm -hmm. And with her, I realized I was good at photographing animals, so I photographed more dogs. And then that led to, for some reason, led to me photographing a friend's horse in Los Angeles, where I brought my whole studio down, and we, it was a big to-do. And some of those images were really successful. He's being humble. It was more than that. And which ended up getting picked up by local art galleries and then eventually by Restoration Hardware. And so, Wow. Just, it just kind of kept parlaying itself. Samuels knew he was definitely on to something. His portfolio began to resemble a wild kingdom. A donkey was his largest animal, actually shot in his studio. And then more followed. Now I've got a few owls, a raven. I've got uh, a Kodiak bear. And now the bear um, was interesting you know, he has these pretty guttural roars, but they just mean that he wants a cookie. <laughs> Not a piece of you. He no, just wants a cookie. <laughs> and he looks really cuddly. But then you realize that your hardwiring kind of kicks in. That yes. you, no, you, don't, you, don't, you don't hug a bear. Now, can we, can we get her? Um, I like, oh, there we go. Oh, oh, step out. Go ahead. The supermodels for this shoot, chickens, courtesy of Mill Valley Farms. Here's Petunia. So the first one, the white, the silky, she was cool looking. She really was. But I had to capture her bedhead quality. So I think after a while, you know, maybe they get used to the lighting There's, and yeah. with them. Um, There's always a moment of like, well, what's going on? And then they quickly kind of realize that you know, that flash means nothing. Right, uh, and this is my moment. Yes, well. <laughs> Who knows? Who and knows what's really going through their head? But like any supermodel, you have to switch it up and hold their attention. Even though Samuels has enough awards to fill a few chicken coops, it is not beneath him to do whatever he can to get the shot. This will be a first, I'm trying to get the attention of a chicken. I would just think, bawk, 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 bawk. They're a tad smarter than that, so here I go. I want her to look over this way if we can. And head up a little higher. Almost. Did you think um, 15, 20 years ago that you would be shooting chickens in alpacas? No, no. And I've always been a commercial photographer. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm still very much a commercial photographer, but my, I'm also selling art to a point where it's, it, it's half of my business. So that is really amazing. And his gift behind the lens opens our minds, showing the raw beauty and story within every animal. Each image and animal that that comes in is kind of becoming a part of my family in a way. It's like a family portrait where 
you're seeing into their soul and when it all works, they're, they're seeing into yours too. Nice. Oh yeah, look, there we go. Yes. Like any great photographer, Samuels has developed a knack for knowing when the time is right for that money shot. I do get them to chill, and once, and I wait for those moments of chill where I can, I can, they relax, and I can see, I get a, I get a little glimpse, and and then it's just about my preparedness and uh, ability to wait for that to happen and and capture that. You have that way about you, though, with your, your personality. That, you oh, know, thank you. Yeah. That's very You're nice. kind of like the Dr. Doodle of photography. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> From behind the lens to being front and center, there's never been a camera this little pup didn't like. His full name is Buster Posey Pursuti. Buster Posey is the catcher for the San Francisco Giants. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> this Maltese Yorkie and sports fan is the canine operating officer at San Francisco's Hotel Nico. The hotel's general manager is Buster's mom, who wanted to take the pet-friendly concept to the next level. When you arrived with your guest, it wouldn't feel like, oh, maybe I need to sneak my dog in. We would welcome the pet Mm -hmm. and give them a dog bowl and a bed and treats and snacks and provide a dog run. So we decided that if we were going to do it, we were really going to do it. (laughs) Okay, so what are his duties? Here, a COO. He does, um, on average, up to six meet and greets a day with our guests. So you can call. um, He actually has his own phone line. You can leave him a message. (sighs) Yes, it's true. Drop him a line. I did. And I scheduled a date. Hey, Buster. It's Kelly from How My Pet Lives. Are you free to meet? Okay. Let me change my clothes. I'll meet you in five in the lobby. And sure enough, he met me in the lobby. You can get a snuggle, a kiss, a selfie, but Buster kind of gave me the VIP tour. Something for you. I've heard so much about you, and I'm so happy to be in San Francisco. So, let's take a tour of Hotel Nico. Come on. Yeah, it's kind of fun for the kids, especially in the summer, you know, when they're away from home. And, you know, if you're missing your dog a little bit, this is, he's a great little lap guy, you know, as you can see. Yes, absolutely. Buster will also meet you at the dog terrace with the hotel's executive team of Tamango and Bijou. Now, Buster, of course, is the boss of them. When, when you see Buster, you see that he also not only represents Hotel Nico, but San Francisco because he's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. He there sure are photos is. of him, you know, by the bridge yeah. and stadium, all the great landmarks of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. To add to his celebrity, there is a buster stuffed animal with proceeds going to a local shelter. Thousands have been raised. Buster, by the way, is a former shelter dog. I remember walking into the room and there were, I think, a few little puppies there and, um, he jumped right into our lap and that was it. I mean, he, you know, he chose us for sure. And a coffee table book, 49 dogs and one cat, which features a dog's view of the city. Yours truly on the cover. Part of the proceeds benefiting the San Francisco SPCA. It captures San Francisco just in on all of its magnificent, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's going to take off. And I I hope so, because I think it'll be a really great thing for the city, but we'll see what happens. So that'll be next. And, you know, it's it's always funny. Somebody's always calling and needing, you know, the dog for something, you know, and we try to let him still be a dog, but we also want it to be for the for the the greater good. Absolutely. All from just barely four years ago, a little dog who kind of jumped onto your lap and there was now now look at him. A dog's sense of smell is so much stronger than a human's. Um, That's really where all of this comes from, their abilities to detect all of these things. So they have anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 times stronger sense of smell than humans. Dogs will have 
300 million olfactory receptors versus 6 million in people. So that makes a huge difference. And there's anatomical differences with dogs as well. The nose knows, especially a canines. We're meeting a dog with a unique gift of the sniff. Dulce lives with her humans on the Honig Vineyard and Winery in the beautiful Napa Valley. We'll learn more about her in a bit. 68 acres. Right. 68 acres, yes, and 55 of those are planted to vine right here. Stephanie Honig gave us a lay of the land. And what kind of grapes are these? So these are Cabernet Sauvignon grapes. These won't be used for wine. They're um, secondary harvest. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, these grapes are super sweet right now, but these won't be used. And we have um, sterlings, so they're the birds that you saw earlier, mm -hmm. and they come down this time of year and they swoosh through, and it's nature's way of cleaning out the vines this time of year. I so, love that. Um, With an extensive background in wine, she married into the Honig family. Her husband, Michael, took over from his dad. It's been in the family more than half a century. So as beautiful as Honig Winery is, there are things that can really ruin a harvest for you guys. And one of those is the mealy bug. Mm -hmm. So explain to us, what is that? Well, you know, in, with any agricultural product, you're faced with the hardships, the hardships of nature. So the grapevine mealy bug, which we don't have here at Honig, but it has been pretty widespread um, in, in certain areas and it's, uh, it's devastating to the vine. That's where Dulce comes in. She is the offspring of Honey, a golden lab who was part of a pilot program trained to sniff out the mealy bug. Michael Honig helped create the program. What we figured out a number of years ago, um, we were working very closely with the Bergen Dog Institute who trained service dogs. And uh, we came up with this idea that if we were able to train dogs who function with 80% scent, right? Um, since this, the female bug, the female mealy bug secretes a certain pheromone scent in the springtime. And uh, they're microscopic bugs, so you can't see them with the naked eye. But if you can train these dogs on what the scent is and they can find it, mm -hmm. then what we do is we can eradicate, pull out that vine and we don't need to spray any chemicals to get rid of the bug. Dulce is still in training, but it's a pretty good bet she carries some quality sniffer genes. Since you developed it, um, how successful has it been? It's been, you know, it's been a really successful program. I mean, it's helped um, vineyards throughout many areas. It's a low cost and organic way of, of dealing with, with a big agricultural problem. It goes beyond sniffer dogs. Honig doesn't use pesticides. They practice an integrated <laughs> pest management system. We have barn owls. Mm -hmm. uh, we create a natural habitat. If we have uh, owl boxes, and the barn owls are really good to keep the rodent population down. Mm -hmm. So they can eat up to a dozen gophers in a 24-hour period. What? It's pretty amazing. Are there? You have that many gophers? There are a lot of. You know, it's, there are coyotes. There's gophers. <laughs> it's. It's. Yeah. For them, this is like a buffet, isn't it? <laughs> they're. They're not hungry. Yes. <laughs> Then there are little bird boxes, 150 of them on the vineyard, home to bluebirds to keep insects at bay. So they they're flutter all somewhere else, right? They now. flutter around, you see them all throughout. And they're beautiful, oh. especially the bluebirds. They're this bright blue color. They're gorgeous. Just adds yeah. to the beauty of this it, place. Yeah, no, it's it, they're really, really cool to watch. And they they help us make great wine. It takes a lot of electricity to run a winery. This one is powered by solar energy and beehives where they extract hundreds of pounds of honey every year. It's a good sign of a healthy ecosystem. But at the end of the day, whether, uh, whether you believe it or not, the quality of the wine is better. So, you know, when you have a, a healthy environment and healthy soils and healthy plants, if you start with a healthy grape, the end product is going to taste better. Stephanie says Napa Valley only accounts for about 4% of the wine produced in California, known for its high quality and reputation. And now I am parched. You guys say anything before you, after you toast? Do you say anything like for Honig? 
No. No, we don't have. You know, that's a good idea. Maybe you should come up with that. A, hon a honing toast. How about? Oh, I have one. Okay. Let's try this. How my fat lives. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I will certainly drink to that. Thanks for joining us for another edition of How My Pet Lives.